How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of rye pale ale time in a form of civil life, rye pale ale. Yeah. This comes courtesy of my boy, Jason, um, from out west, or midwest, I should say. Uh, he sent me off a box of five of these. I'm going to say that in every one of these, and you're going to watch these all in succession and be like, this dude's repeating himself, because that's what I do. And I'm pumped. Uh, this is third, third, not third, third, third of five, and I'm excited. New brewery time. What's not to be excited? But rye pale ales, not a lot of people make them, so we'll see what's what. They could call this a balanced, sessionable GABF gold medal winning ale. Keeps pine and citrus hop notes in perfect balance with the spiciness of rye malt. Yeah. Let's see what's what. Label wise, it's the label all over and over again. So, just different colored can, different verbiage. So, you guys know the can already. And as far as a rye pale ale goes, that looks like a rye beer. I mean, it has that rich kind of darkness to it. Um, again, probably just a skosh darker than what you expect from a traditional kind of rye pale ale, depending on the ABV level here. Um, all their stuff is skewed kind of low, so I'm assuming this would be much the same. Uh, rich kind of copper coin in color. Um, Off-white, south of khaki, kind of quarter pinky finger, half pinky finger, of uh, super tight compact bubbles, and just, yeah, looks the part. A little rye pale. Yeah. It's good nose. Definitely get the rye in there. Um, it's almost like an uncooked, kind of uncured kind of rye. Um, it's not super spicy, um, but it has that kind of spicy base to it. But doesn't it's not sharp. It's a little bit rounded. That's why I said like a like uncooked, uncured kind of spiciness. So it's a little bit softer than what you'd expect. A little bit of soft sweetness. A little bit of extra bittering from some hops. Done and done. I'm not really getting a big kind of pine thing on there. Subtle little pineness. Not really getting much as far as citrus. Just that soft little rye. Bit of bittering. Let's dive in. Cheers. I like that. That's super chuggable. Man. Yeah, I mean, when I think of rye in a beer, the first thing that really jumps to mind to me is kind of impact. Um, not that this lacks that. There's a, a little bit more sharpness to the rye than a nose would lead you to believe. But it comes in such a tight and tidy little itty bitty package that it ends up being kind of drinkable. I never would say a session rye ale, but it's kind of coming off in that way. I would be surprised as above six. I'd be surprised as above five um, percent alcohol. But it just gives you this nice, very gentle, soft sweetness. Um, not much as far as overt sweetness, just enough to kind of balance off. A little bit of soft bittering up from the hops and the rye really taking the kind of forefront, uh, being the kind of um, the showcase thing here, which it should be. It's a rye pale ale. And, and, and being sharp enough to give you that kind of rye impact without being overly aggressive to make you want to go back for a little bit more. That's a tasty little bugger. Yeah, I dig this. I like this. I mean, rye pale ales are few and far between. Typically, when they have a rye pale ale, almost exclusively, it's a it's a tap room kind of thing. It's it's a beer I get at a tap room. It's not necessarily something that I have in a can. I mean, COVID has kind of changed that. Almost everything comes in cans now. But I'm I'm guessing these guys kind of put this beer out previously in cans, and I dig this. I like this as a change of pace, as something fun to drink in a sessionable kind of way. Like I said, I'd be surprised if this isn't uh, below six, even below five. So for this to be, you know, hopefully in a six pack format, hopefully sub 10 bucks is kind of like what I want when it comes to like drinkable beer in a very fun way. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is blowing my doors off. It's the best beer I've ever had in my life, but it's clean. It's really well made. Those are two of the kind of uh, vibes, two of the things that keep hitting you know, my brain, my palate, my uh, thought process when it comes to be, uh, when it comes to drinking these kind of civil life beers that uh, just really well made stuff. Old school, not for everybody maybe, but yeah, super good stuff, at least for me. So let's talk about it. It's one of the rare, better rye pails that I've had as like, it would default to number one um, because I can't remember the last rye pail I've had. Is it one of the better rye beers? Let's just open it up in that wide of a berth. It still would be up there. I mean, anybody meet Mount Rushmore status just for its drinkability alone. I really dig this beer. Value availability? No idea. Like I said, small, 
12 ounce format, hopefully six packs, hopefully right pale ale. Okay, let's say hopefully less than 12 bucks a six or hopefully less than 10. Um, and I'll uh, leave you with, if you like what we like this beer, if you like rye beers, I mean, it's not a huge beer, it's not impactful, it's not like a rye wine or some kind of crazy over the top double IPA with rye. It is showcasing rye in its purest form, an itty bitty beer, and it does it really well. So if you dig rye in beers, you will like this. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers if you want to check me out there in the social media stuff. Beer Massive. Want to check me out there in the whole podcasting thing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you are enjoying a little rye jam right now. And hopefully see you next time. Cheers.